Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast, sponsored by Rack Coach and Sports Workbook. We have Coach Mountjoy on today. Uh, Coach, could you click on the YouTube site? I'm um, see if we can't get uh, get it pulled yeah, up. Hold, hold on, let, let me. Uh, yeah, I just see it. I, I don't see. Oh, okay, wait a minute. There we go. All right, I'm with you. Okay. All right, whenever okay. whenever you're ready, Coach. Okay. Uh, Troy asked that we speak about the zone running game today. And, of course, that is so uh, important in the NFL and college football. Almost everything comes from a zone running game. Even these RPO teams are coming up and they're calling inside zone and then they have an RPO off that, which we don't do. But I just want to talk about the basic zone running game. But uh, if you look at uh, any team, high school, college, pro, you see inside zone, outside zone, and play actions off zone. So, so the zone running game, and I don't know, I hope Jim McDowell is listening, and I hope maybe he will, will chime in on this, but the zone running game really, to my knowledge, dates back to Sid Gilman and Vince Lombardi when they were coaching at West Point Army in 1948. Sid Gilman taught it to Lombardi, who took it on to the Green Bay Packers. And Lombardi, uh, in his book, uh, calls it doodad blocking. In fact, if you have uh, Vince Lombardi's book, Run to Daylight, it's got a great two pages of illustrations of drawings of doodad blocking. And from there, it spread. And um, the modern fathers of his own running game, to my way of thinking, were Alex Gibbs, who died in 2021. Joe Bugle, who died in 2020. Jim McNally, who's still with us. Howard Mudd, who died in 2020. Those four guys are the people that I learned it from. And uh, they differed somewhat in that Alex Gibbs and Joe Bugle did not advocate uh, taking a drop step in zone blocking, whereas Jim McNally and Howard Mudd did advocate taking a drop step in zone blocking. Uh, I guess Jim still does. I don't know. But um, I'll get to that later, but why, why do you zone block? You would zone block. I have a list somewhere. And I'm not going to go over the whole list because it would take all afternoon, a list of six reasons in depth why we think it's important to zone block. But the main reason is that it helps you to block slanting and angling defenses. If you man block, you try to man block a, a defense that slants and angles, you miss your man or you, you just don't get there and, so uh, it's, all, it's important that you zone block slanting and angling defenses. Uh, in a zone block, each man only has half of a man because they have ass protection coming from the uncovered teammate to the inside. This gives you a lot of double teams, and it also lets you come off the ball faster. Um, Cuda blocking this is actually uh, very easy assignment-wise, and you can interchange positions in this easily because in a zone block, you're either uncovered or covered, and the techniques for those two apply to all seven offensive linemen. If you were in two tights, the seven offensive linemen, everybody in there learns to block if he's covered or learns to block if he's uncovered. And once you learn those principles, you can play anywhere on the offensive line and still know who to block or how to block, who and how both as well. And sometimes the who is just as important as the how. Um, zone blocking attacks a defense, the down lineman is from inside out. Whereas, uh, and I'm going to get into that in more detail, but whereas the gap scheme or counter power attacks the down lineman from outside in. And that's important because my line, if you're a defensive lineman playing against us, you may be attacked from a blocker coming from the inside if we're zone blocking. Or you might be attacked from a, line, a blocker coming from the outside if we're gap scheme blocking. And we run both almost equally. And, and it's important because that way uh, your down linemen don't know which to which side they're going to be attacked from the majority of the time. So we only have those two run blocking schemes. The zone scheme, which we have three basic plays in the zone scheme, uh, and the gap scheme in which we have two or three basic plays. And that's really six, five or six basic runs. And the, the big 
to me, uh, the big problem I see, particularly on, on lower levels, high school and some colleges, and when you get to major college and pro, you can get a little more into this, but these people seem to want to tinker with the basic runs. To me, if you can run the inside zone and the outside zone well, you're on your way. But I've given the inside zone and the outside zone to some high school teams, and the next thing you know, they want to they have like four variations of each. And as a consequence, they never really do anything well. So I tell teams, if you will run the inside zone, you run the inside zone and you get down pat before you even start messing with it. There are different things you can do off the inside zone. And the same with the outside zone. If you run the outside zone, get it down pat. And you can run these, you can run these to the split inside or the tight inside. I'm going to get into that later as well. But don't tinker with these basic runs, inside zone, outside zone. I know some people have five variations of the inside zone, five variations of the outside zone, and you watch them play, they don't do any of them well. So if you can do the inside and outside zone well in, in the zone scheme and you get over to the gap scheme, if you can run the counter and power well, you're on your way. That's four basic runs. I know that uh, Joe Gibbs, for example, uh, in Super Bowl twenty two, he ran the – the counter 22 times for 204 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> no variations. He just ran it. And that's what it's all about, getting good at something and not going overboard and doing too many things. The next thing I want to say is that we like the, the zone running game from 11 personnel or 12 personnel. Now, when you get to the gap scheme, you pretty much need 12 personnel in the gap scheme there are variations in the gap scheme from 11 personnel, but on the basic counter power, you need to be in 12 personnel. And I'll get to that later. But on the zone scheme, it can be run from 11 or 12 personnel. And uh, I want to get into that as well as we go along. Now, an overview of all this, I'm not going to get that deep into technique. And, and there's a lot of reasons because teams that run the zone plays, they run it from under the center. They run it from the pistol. They run it from the gun. Although I might add, don't try to run the outside zone from the gun. I never will forget when Clemson won the national championship. I think it was 2017. I don't, I'm not sure. They said that the worst play they had was the outside zone from the gun because the ball carry had to come too far flat across the line, flat across laterally, and not coming from depth where he could hit downhill and, and get his reads proper. So we just don't believe in. Um, outside zone on the gun. I see a lot of people running inside zone on the gun, like Chip Kelly at Oregon uh, and UCLA started doing that, mixing it with, with uh, RPOs, but that's another thing. Another reason I'm not going to get too deep into technique is, is that some people, like Jim McNally, would drop step with the offensive lineman, and other people, like Joe Bugle, uh, Alex Gibbs, would not drop step. They would leave lead step. So I'm not going to get as much into into uh, technique, whether it's coming from under center, pistol, gun, uh, or whether you lead step and a drop step. But I do want to give an overview of the zone plays and uh, what I think are some impo really important things. And uh, with that, if you don't mind, if you would go to the page one of the notes I gave you. Yes, sir. All right. On page right. one, I have something that I really think, I want Jim McNally to comment on this too. I really think that a lot of people don't really understand about zone block. You take that, uh, you can enlarge out of something. Let's see. I take my picture out of that if you can. All right, take it up a little bit higher because the diagram is under the page number. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, there's a big misconception about zone blocking. I, that I never hear it discussed, but I, I always hear people say, well, should we man block or should we zone block? And what people, I think, and I want Jim to come, Mac Daly to comment, that uh, many people think that when you say we're going to run a zone play, that the entire offensive line has to zone block. And you only zone block from the bubble. That's, a, that's an uncovered line, but to the next man out towards the play side, and you apply what we call, uh, and what 
I know that Joe, Joe Bugle and Alex Gibbs calls the uncovered covered rule. And that means if you're uncovered, you're going to zone with your teammate towards the call. That's your blocking rule. It tells you who to block all, all the linemen. So if you're uncovered, you go zone with your teammate towards the call. If you're covered, you go zone with your teammate away from the call. If you're both covered, you'll have to man block. See, so I'm going to show you the examples of this, but that means that you don't know when you come to the line until the defense shows itself whether you're going to zone block or man block. And there are the rules right there. So take it up to the first diagram and leave number one showing versus number one bubble. But show the, the diagram under that. Yeah, all right, right there, hold it. All right, so number one, if there's no bubble, meaning there's none of those linemen are uncovered uh, by a linebacker, let's say, or just space, no bubble, nobody's going to zone block. Now, you might call a zone play, but all seven of those men are covered, and they're going to have to man block because the rule says you, uh, you zone from the uncovered man towards the play call. So if we got a play call to the right here, let's say inside, outside, zone right, and they run that front, uh, nobody's going to zone block. They're going to all man block. You can't zone. Now, you say, well, I don't see that front. Well, the Oakland Raiders ran it against the Redskins in the Super Bowl one year uh, by moving the two inside backers in a, in a 34 defense up on the guards, which is shown there, and they call it mug. And like Joe Bugle said, when you see a mug front, you can't zone block. And that, that really hurt the uh, zone plays. Excuse me, Betty, take this real quick. I'll put that sound up. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, anyway, so if there's no bubble, nobody's going to zone block. You can see the diagram. There are linebackers up on those guards. Take it up to two. Yeah, Coach, uh, I, I let Coach McNally know I sent him the link. He said he can't watch it right now. He will later. Um, That's good. Okay? That's good. That's fine. I'll just show two. Yes, sir. This is two, one bubble, and the diagram under it. All right, whoa. Now, if you have one bubble, and that's a pro four three, if you have one bubble, it's going to be one zone combination because the center's uncovered. He's going to zone. Let's say the zone plays to the right. The center's uncovered, so he's zoning with his uh, his cover teammate to the right. Now, the other the other uh, five men all have to man block. Let's say if you're in two tights, and most people aren't, but the tight end on the left, the left tackle, and the left guard have to man block. The center and right guard zone block, right tackle and tight end, man block. So you see, people say, well, am I going to zone block or man block? Uh, you don't know until you get up and see the front, and then um, the, the, the uh, zone occurs from the bubble on out. So there's one bubble in that example. Go to the next example. Now, this covers this really pretty much, if you understand this and know how to do this, this more or less takes care of blocking rules, so to speak, who to block, I won't. Now, if there are two bubbles, such as that 34 defense, you have two zone combinations. Remember that the number of bubbles is going to determine the number of doubles, zone combinations. So example, zone play right. The uncovered left guard zones with his covered uh, play side teammate, who is the center. And the uncovered right guard zones with his covered play side teammate, who is the right tackle. The other three men being the tight end on the left, the left tackle, and the tight end on the right, all have to man block. And this is, I never hear people discuss zone blocking in this context. But Coach, Coach McNally, Coach McNally left a comment. He said, tell him I love whatever he says. <laughs> tell him I love him too. I'll okay, go good. Number four. Go ahead. What'd you say? Number four. Yeah. All right. So when there's three bubbles, we've already been over no bubbles, one bubble, and two bubbles. Three bubbles, and that's a college four three or, or, or the Miami four three, whatever you want to call it. You have three zone combinations. So once again, the number of bubbles equals the number of doubles, or the number of zone combinations. So example zone play right. The uncovered left tackle zones with his covered teammate, who is a play side left guard, his to his play side. The uncovered center zones with his covered 
play side teammate towards the play side, who's the right guard. And the uncovered right guard zones with his covered play side teammate, who is the right end. The other remaining one man, who is a tight end on the left, would, zone, would man block. Take it up one more, one more notch there. Take it up so you can see, remember, at the bottom of the page. All right, hope. Always remember, zone blocking begins at the bubble and zones towards the play side. The play side is right. I don't mean the side of the play is coming. It means the direction the play is coming. It's not the side of the center where the play is coming, but the direction of where the play is coming. So the play side of everybody in that diagram will be uh, will be to the right, let's say. So uh, zone blocking begins at the bubbles, bubble or bubbles, and zones towards the play side, which is right in all the examples I've shown. And this is what we tell the kids. The number of bubbles equals the number of doubles. Doubles meaning play side combinations. Okay, now if you will go to the next page. Go to the next page, Troy. Yeah, I got it on oh. gut. I gotta I gotta I yeah. gotta bring it back, coach. All right, all right, there you go. You can go up so it just where it says forty gut. Take it up. Go right there, hold it. That's good. Now I want you to come back there you go. Leave it there. No. Come back where I can see forty gut and the running back both. I I can't, coach. Is it, All right, we'll be right there. All right, okay. This is 40 gut, which is the inside zone. That's good. Hold it. 40 gut is the inside zone. Now, you can see examples that that uh, the uncovered men in this, uh, the left tackle's uncovered, so he zones with the left guard. The right guard's untackled, so he zones with the uh, – excuse me, the right guard's uncovered, so he zones with the right tackle. And that's the inside zone. Uh, it's got a little more information under that. I don't really don't want to get into the steps for the quarterbacks and the running backs and the linemen right yet. But um, I'll just say this quarterback comes back to 5 o'clock, and, um, and, and, of course, he would mesh, and then he would carry out a good fake uh, away, uh, naked fake away. The uh, running back will open, will open lead step, cross over, square up, and hit the outside leg of the guard. And his read, you see a little dot over top of the defensive end on the right. That's more or less going to be his read. He's reading that man. We don't read linebackers and running backs. Uh, the duo people do, but this is an inside zone. We're reading the dot on the uh, the uh, defensive end on the right. And of course, if that uh, stayed square or or worked out, we would cram that B gap. And if that came hard down inside, it's going to give us a cut. It's going to give us a cut. Either uh, one cut either uh, to the outside of that man or perhaps if uh, he and the that nose came over to the B gap, he would have to cut it back. But anyway, we don't we don't like to cut back. We want we, we think the best cut is no cut. We want to cram that thing in that B gap. If you remember, um, this was a big play for the Redskins when they had John Riggins. And he would just cram that big gap and away they would go. He, he just was not much of a jump-cut runner. I might add, too, in this diagram, something of utmost importance, and that is that the wide receivers must block the safeties. That is hugely important. The over on the right, the flanker, Z, you see he's got uh, either the strong safety or the corner. If the corner rolled up, the strong safety went back, of course, it would be the corner. But otherwise, he's going to crack that safe, strong safety. And the split end is going to try to work to the free safety. If he can't get that, he'll turn back. We call that a convoy. So, anyway, uh, that's the inside zone. And that's the first play most people put in. Although we, we run the outside zone probably three to one, four to one over the inside zone. A lot of people today, from the gun that are running the RPOs and all, and setting it up with the inside zone. They don't do that, but we, we're we not that much in a gun. I don't like this as much from a gun, and I will tell you, tell you why. If you're in a gun, the running back has to come across laterally, and he's not hitting downhill. He can't go to both sides, and he sometimes has problems reading coming sideways rather than downhill. We like this thing 
Um, so we like this thing so that we can hit downhill. The running back can hit downhill. Um, so it could be from under center, it could be from pistol. I don't like the inside zone from a gun. And a lot of people run it, and it can be done. Now, I just don't like the, the outside zone. I wouldn't run from a gun if they paid me. Like uh, Clemson said, it's a bad play. It's not really a good football play. All right, now, continuing with the zone series, go to the next diagram. All right, take it up by whoa, right there. Now, we call this the H around. And this is a play off of the inside zone. And remember I said, okay, uh, that the inside and the outside zones can be run to the split inside of the tight inside. But this play, the H around, we like to get trips right and run it back to the split inside. And you might say, well, when do we run it? We will get into trips right and run the zone right as shown above inside zone right and fake that thing to the H back several times and when that defensive end on the left starts to ignore that H back on the fake then we'll give it to him and we've got some awful big plays out of that and the reason it's good it keeps that backside defensive end honest because if you don't have something to threaten see him back there he will come flat down the line of scrimmage and sometimes uh, he'll stop stuff up the middle, perhaps even an inside zone, particularly if he cuts back. So that defensive end on our left can be a real problem uh, on the inside zone and other plays up the middle uh, if you don't keep him honest. And we keep him honest by running inside zone right and faking that H back after the uh, running back uh, gets the ball. Then when the press box notices that that defensive end on the left is ignoring that H back, and he's coming across and bending flat down the line of scrimmage right off the heels of those offensive linemen, they will give the ball to him. And if you ever saw uh, the Redskins do that to Joe Washington and Kelvin Bryant, it was a beautiful, huge play. So that's the second play in the zone uh, series. That's not inside zone, outside zone. It's a variation off of inside zone, but we feel like that is necessary. All right, if you'll go to the next diagram, and the next diagram is the best play in our offense, and that's the outside zone. And you can see that the I said we wouldn't get into blocking technique. The the inside zone, I, I need to mention this, and I, I have more technique that I can give to anybody that contacts me or we can discuss it later, but the inside zone, the uncovered lineman will take one step towards his van. And if he's, in this case, it's at the end on the right tackle. He'll take one step towards him on the inside zone, and if he doesn't show, he'll get up on it back quick because it's coming in the D gap. But on the outside zone, we will take three steps towards that man. If we have hit him by the third step, then we will turn up on the backer. And on the, ins on the outside zone, oh, excuse me, on the inside zone, the right tackle there would drive block it, and on the outside zone, he'd reach block it. So the outside zone, is you're blocking the same end you do on the inside zone, but it's a wider technique. But once again, in the inside zone, that right guard would take one step, and if that end is not coming inside, he'd go get that back immediately. And the right tackle would drive block the outside half of that end. Then on the outside zone, that right guard will take as many as three steps towards that end. And if he doesn't come inside, then he'll turn up, and the right tackle will reach block that end, knowing that, that he can take a lot of reach block because that guard's going to take more steps to protect his backside. And the tight end, of course, is reaching. So that's the outside zone. And that's also shown from trips right or train right. The only difference in trips and train is that F – who some people call a fullback, we call him an H-back, really. But that, that F, can, if he's a yard outside of Y, it's trips. If he's halfway out towards Z as a wide receiver, that's train. But in either case, he's blocking the safety, and the corner's block, or the flank is blocking the corner, and the backside split in is trying to get to his safety. If he can't get there, he has to turn back and convoy. So that's the outside zone. And let me say this. We speak of running... Uh, inside and outside zones to the, uh, either to the split inside or the tie inside. 
The best play in our offense by far is what you see here, and that's the outside zone to the to the uh, split ends. Be on, wait a minute, you left me now. Come back to the top of the page. Hold it. Outside zone to the split inside from a 3-1 set. Alex Gibbs, who, like I said, died a couple of years ago, before he died, he made a, co a comment at the cool clinic. He said, the best play in the NFL today, most productive play in the NFL today, and it has been for us, is to run the outside zone to the split inside if there are only three men there. The three men from the center's nose out towards the split in. And you can see here, you've got three men, the center being, of course, shaded in black. You have three men to the left of the center towards the split inside in the box. That's not talking about corners or wide linebackers or anything like that. But, but three men to the left of the center towards the split in in the box. And if you do that, then uh, the outside zone to the split inside becomes the best play in your offense. But where I have OZ, CWM, that means check with me, we'll go in the huddle and we'll say, uh, outside zone, check with me. And we get up to the ball and the quarterback sees there's only three men to the left, and he'll say, uh, check yellow 90. 90 being the outside zone. Yellow means the left. Check yellow 90. Check yellow 90. That means check. We'll go around the outside zone to the left. Now, if for some reason he, there were uh, four men over there, he'd say, check uh, red 80, and then we'll go run it to the right. Go up to the next side. Take it up to the very next side. Right? Number two, got it, Coach. All right, wait a minute. There's a uh, – all right, shade nose on the back side. All right. No, the – Hold on just a minute. Let me see. Let me get back here a second. All right. If there's a nose shaded on the back side, we expect in, in the on the outside zone there, the, the left guard to cut that to reach that guy to cut him, cut him off. And the center still still doubles with the man on the uh, right guard. So let's just say, let's just say that diagram there, that diagram. There, we would have the left guard would, would cut that number two, uh, cut that tackle who shades in the center, and the center of the right guard would zone from that uh, three technique on the right guard up to the middle backer. So uh, we don't have the center help the backside guard on the outside zone. He might on the inside zone, maybe, but not on the outside zone. He's strictly front side on the outside zone. I hope that answers Steve's question. And Steve, if you email me, I'll send you the diagrams that shows the inside and outside zone uh, against all these different fronts, and you'll see that on paper. And I can, if you email me uh, right now, actually, so that when I finish, I'll send you the diagrams that will show you that. So there, in that diagram, uh, to get back to my point, so we said that if, if there are four men to the left of the center, from the left of the center's nose, and there are four, middle backer being on the center's nose, then we would want to run the outside zone to the other side in this 3-1 set. So that would be, if we went in the huddle and we said, outside zone, check with me, we get to the line of scrimmage, and, uh, and we see four men from the center's nose to the left towards the split end. Quarterback would say, check red 80, check red 80. Red means right, 80 means outside zone right. Yellow is left and 90 is outside zone left. So it's either check yellow 90 or if we're going left, check red 80 if we're going right. Check yellow 90 and, and this 3-1 set is to the split end side. And check red 80 and this 3-1 set is to the tight end side. And like I said, Alex Gibbs said this is by far the, the really best play in his offense. And, and um, I think... So many people think that Alex Gibbs ran the outside zone better than anybody that ever lived. Of course, Jim McDowell ran it pretty well, too, with Mickey Woods and those people. But um, it's strange that Jim McDowell ran the inside and outside zone both beautifully, and Alex Gibbs ran the outside zone better than, uh, than anybody. And he would not – Alex Gibbs – didn't like the inside zone. He'd run the outside zone, I think, four to one over the inside zone. And Alex Gibbs has all these clinic lectures and videos out on the outside zone, and he wouldn't speak about much about the inside zone. 
talking to the NFL line coaches and said, well, Alex didn't really run the inside zone all that great, but he ran the outside zone better than anybody. So uh, Joe Bugle now ran the inside zone so well with Riggins. Um, and McNally ran both with Icky Woods and, and that crowd. But, uh, but Alex ran the outside zone to Terrell Davis, and he can find cut ups of that on YouTube. And Bugle ran the inside zone, Riggins, and of course, like I said, Jim McNally ran both with everybody, uh, in all of his running backs. All right, number three, the OP rule. If you're out leveraged on a lot of scrimmage to the weak side, run away. It says defender lines over, uh, the offensive tackle and the second line of, uh, second fit on the line of scrimmage to weak side. So that's, you're there. It's not necessarily four men. To the to the uh, it's not necessarily four men to the left of the center, but but you're leveraged uh, on the line of scrimmage. Uh, well, number three is on the line of scrimmage, and you don't really have a good play. If two were to come in the B gap, and three were to come in the C gap, or even uh, two coming inside that left tackle, or three coming outside that left tackle, you really don't have a great play on the inside zone. So, so they on the OP rule, we would uh, we would say check red eighty. If we if we had gone in the huddle saying inside outside zone check with me, and uh, how are we doing on time? Yeah, um, I, we I got Craig Rowe waiting, Coach, uh, my next guy. So whenever you're ready, how, we how much? Well, I, I, have, I have something else if we need be. But how many minutes have we been on? Uh, we've been on for uh, thirty one minutes, but I, I have Craig waiting on uh, me, and he. Um, so if, if you want to end up, Coach, uh, I can call you back, or yeah. we can just do it tomorrow. No, finish. That's okay. That's okay. We can, next time we'll do the uh, we'll do the uh, gap scheme. But let me just quickly say this. Yes, sir. The offensive uh, I mentioned the offensive lineman, our offensive lineman, split eighteen inches. And I'd be interested in knowing, knowing what Jim McDowell thinks of that because eighteen inches is what Alex Gibbs always did. Bugle changed from 24 inches to 18 later on in his career, and I'm interested in what Jim thinks. Coach said 18. Lines, Coach McNally said 18 last time I talked to him. Right, that's good. And the running back is seven and a half yards deep. We, we put his heels at seven and a half yards. And not that it makes any difference. Some people put his toes at seven and a half yards. But um, basically, basically, we want to run the inside zone to the to the lower number technique. Like if you have a one technique and a three technique. And we're running inside zone. We would like to run it to the one technique side. Some people call that white or wide. We like to run the outside zone more to the uh, three technique or the red side. Um, but either play can be run to the tight inside, red meaning reduction. But either play can be run to the tight inside or the split inside. And uh, but the best thing we did, just to repeat, is what you have on the screen now, is to run the outside zone to the three-man side in a three-by-one trip set to the split inside. That's the best thing we did. And the, finally, to close, these are great for play action, whether they be naked or either fake the play and come back a step uh, in the pocket and throw the ball or naked to the uh, away from the point of attack. Great for play action. I just don't have time to draw all them up now. Okay, Coach, and uh, that's good. So tell uh, Steve to email me, and I'll send him or anybody else. I'll send him the diagrams of how they, these plays are blocked. Uh, with, if his nose is shaded weak, yes, Once sir. Again, the center, the center does not on a weak uh, shade away from the call on the outside zone. He might on the inside zone. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank All you, right. coach. Talk you I'll talk to you later, okay. coach. Thank you.